Hello, I am going to tell you my version of a Native American folk tale about how the earth came to be. In some cultures, earth is called Turtle Island. And this is the story of how Turtle Island came to be. So in the beginning, there was Sky World, where the sun shone and life abounded and the tree of life grew. Just like this tree here is growing, full of life. And in this tree of life, every kind of fruit and nut and seed grew. Every kind of tree that we have around us today, the oak tree, the maple leaf, the maple tree, the ash tree, the elm, the pine, the spruce, the fir, hickory, every kind of tree, grew within the tree of life. The tree of life was the miracle tree. Now, Sky Woman loved the tree of life, and every day she would go out and say hello to the tree of life. And she would thank the tree of life for all the wonderful gifts that it provided. Not only did it provide fruit such as apples and cherries, but it provided nuts like walnuts and chestnuts and hazelnuts. It provided leaves. It provided shelter. It provided shade from the sun. The tree of life gave so many gifts and Sky Woman so appreciated tree of life. So every day she would come out and visit. Now below Sky World was darkness. And far, far, far below Sky World was water. Water so dark and so deep where animals lived. No land, just water and darkness. In Sky World, it was bright and light and full of life. But below Sky World, the animals lived amidst the water. One day, there was a storm in Sky World that came along. The sun was pushed aside as the clouds rolled in, and the wind and the rain and the storm came with fury. The wind raged and blew and blew and blew all night. Throughout the night, you could hear cracking and smashing and breaking and all sorts of calamity out there. It was a violent storm. And the next day when the storm finally settled and Sky World quieted again and the sun again shone, Sky Woman came out of her house and went to see the tree of life. Well, during this mighty storm, the wind had blown so hard that it had toppled the tree of life. And when Sky Woman came upon the tree of life down on its side, she gasped, her heart was sick. And not only had the tree been knocked over, its roots had clung to the land and yanked up all the land below it, leaving a hole which exposed the world below, the darkness and the water. But it was so far below, you couldn't see anything. You could just see darkness. And the sun shone down this hole in a stream of light. And it shone for so long because below was so far that you couldn't see it. Sky Woman, heart sick, reached out to touch the tree and just then more of the land gave way and she started to fall through the great hole in the ground and she grabbed onto the tree of life and tried to hang on, but away came the branch in her hand as she fell. It was just at this moment when she was falling, 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 that the animals below were all at the top and surface of the water looking up as this shaft of light, this shaft of sunlight they'd never seen before was shining down. 
The whale surfaced and looked up. Loon was gazing at the light. Otter and muskrat and beaver and turtle, they all were there wondering, what is this? And from the light, this tiny, tiny spot of movement. Was it dust? They couldn't tell. It was getting a little bit bigger. Of course, it was Sky Woman falling, but they didn't know that because she was so far away and it took such a long time for her to fall. And then as they watched, they, decided, they saw that she was, it was a woman falling with her arms spread out and her hair flowing behind her. And she was spinning, pirouetting down, down, down. Well, the animals knew because they could not see wings on her and they could not see tails or flippers. She did not look like a creature of the water. And they knew that she would not be able to survive if she landed down in the water. So the geese gathered together and they rose up together and gently caught her on their wings. Slowly, they flew down holding Sky Woman on their wings until they got back to the water. They were tiring because it had been a long journey and they knew they couldn't hold on to Sky Woman so that much longer. And so they said, where can we land? There is no land here for her. It was at that time the turtle rose to the surface offering his shell for Sky Woman to land on. So the geese gently flew down over Turtle and Sky Woman gently stepped off and stood on Turtle's back. But they knew they couldn't stay there forever. And the animals heard, had heard of legend that at the bottom of the ocean, where none of them had been, there was mud. And so they decided that they would swim down and see if they could bring some mud back up to make some land for Sky Woman. First Loon, who was a very strong swimmer and could dive so, so deep, went. The animals waited. Long time later, Loon emerged from the water gasping for air. I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it. It was too far for the depth and the pressure and the darkness was nothing like any of the animals have ever experienced before. Next, whale swam down and whale came up. Animal after animal all attempted to dive down and get mud. Some didn't return at all and most came back gasping for air, not having been able to get to the mud. Last of all was little muskrat who was not a very strong swimmer, not very big, not very powerful, but he said he would go. The other animals looked on doubtfully. Could he do it? Something that none of them had been able to do? They didn't know, but they had to try. And so Muskrat dove down, his little legs struggling to push him farther deeper. Muskrat was gone a very long time. Soon the animals started to lose hope that maybe Muskrat would not return and that they would not be able to help Sky Woman. When all of a sudden, some bubbles started popping up on the surface of the water and then limp little Muskrat's body turned up on the surface of the water. He had not lived. He had not made it. He had died on his journey and the animals' hearts were broken that this little creature had been so brave to make this journey, which he did not survive. But they noticed that in his claw, he was clutching something. And so they gently unfolded his claw to discover that he had indeed made it to the bottom. He had found the mud and clutched some in his hand and brought it back to the surface. 
They gave it to Sky Woman, who gently rubbed it on the back of Shirtle Turtle's shell. She was so grateful and so moved and so full of thanks that she began to dance and move the mud around with her toes. And she sang and she sent love to all these animals who just were trying to help her. And so she wanted to give back. Now she had spread all the mud over Turtle's shell and she remembered like a good guest who visits, you always bring a gift. And she remembered that she too had a gift to give because in her hand, she still clutched the branch from the tree of life, which held all the seeds and leaves and nuts and berries from all the trees. And so one by one, she'd take a seed off and plant it in the mud. And she'd cover it over and water it. And she did this over time and she took great care that eventually Turtle Shell became the land and full of life. Eventually, Many of the animals joined Sky Woman on this land. They still swam, but they enjoyed the seeds and the fruit and the shelter and all the gifts of the Tree of Life. And to this day, they give thanks to the trees as Sky Woman gave thanks to them for giving her the gift.